I, I think probably where things are headed from uh, the standpoint of AI is that we, we have a silicon shortage now that will transition to a voltage transformer shortage, just electricity shortages in general in about two years. Sounds crazy, right? But with a trillion dollar upgrade on the horizon, the question isn't just when this will happen, but if we're truly ready for the massive surge in EVs. This scenario isn't just possible, it's becoming more likely. So, how close are we to that tipping point, and what needs to happen to make sure we don't get there? Let's take a closer look at where we are today. The power grid, especially here in the US, is old really old. We're talking about infrastructure that was built decades ago, long before electric vehicles were even a consideration. Back then, the biggest concern was making sure your toaster and your hairdryer didn't blow a fuse at the same time. But today, we're talking about powering millions of cars, all drawing huge amounts of energy from the grid. This is a whole new level of demand that our aging infrastructure just wasn't designed to handle. Right now, the US has approximately 2.5 million electric vehicles, and the grid can support about 24 million of them. That might sound like a lot, but with EV adoption accelerating, we're expected to hit that number by 2028. In fact, we're already starting to see areas where the grid is feeling the strain. Some regions, especially those in high EV adoption states like California, are already seeing overloaded transformers, and utility companies are scrambling to keep up. The real challenge comes from the fact that EVs consume a significant amount of energy, especially during peak times. Unlike conventional electricity use, like lighting or heating, charging an EV can create a sudden spike in demand. This places a unique strain on the grid, especially when many vehicles are plugged in simultaneously, something we're already starting to see in regions with high adoption rates. So, what does the future look like? By 2030, EVs are expected to make up a significant portion of new car sales with tens of millions of new electric vehicles hitting the road every year. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the grid. Think about it. The average American drives about 13,500 miles a year. Now imagine millions of those miles powered by electricity. We're talking about adding the equivalent of another state's worth of electricity consumption just from EVs alone. I said, look, you really need to prepare for a tripling of electricity demand because all transport is gonna go electric with the ironic exception of rockets and, and heating so i encourage the utilities to build more power plants and they should definitely buy more batteries but here's where things get even more complicated peak hour demand picture this it's a hot summer day and everyone's blasting their ac to stay cool around 6 p.m people start getting home from work and they all plug in their evs at the same time suddenly the grid is hit with this massive surge in demand. The power lines and transformers, already working hard to handle the air conditioning load, now have to support thousands of EVs charging simultaneously. It's like trying to use a fire hose with garden hose pressure. The current grid just isn't built to handle these kinds of sudden, dramatic spikes in demand, and it starts to strain under the pressure. As EV adoption grows, these peak demand events will become more frequent, and the challenges we face in managing them will increase exponentially. But here's the good news, there are solutions. We need to modernize our grid, and that means upgrading power lines, substations, and our entire electrical infrastructure to handle the increased demand. But it's not just about adding more capacity, we also need to integrate renewable energy sources like solar and wind into the grid. These sources are intermittent, meaning they don't produce electricity all the time, so we need a flexible, resilient grid that can balance supply and demand because the, the grid currently is sized for real-time load. You know, that means you've got to size for whatever the, the peak electricity demand is, like the worst second or the worst day of the year. There's almost no buffering of energy in the grid. With batteries, you can produce energy at night and use it during the day. Renewable energy integration is key. Imagine a grid that uses excess solar energy generated during the day to charge EVs during off-peak hours. Smart energy management systems could ensure that the grid is always balanced, storing energy when it's available and distributing it when the demand is high. And this is where smart grid technology comes in.
Smart grids use advanced digital technology to monitor and manage the flow of electricity in real time. They can automatically adjust to changes in demand and supply, making the grid more efficient and reliable. Imagine a future where you can charge your EV whenever you want without worrying about overloading the grid. A future where renewable energy is seamlessly integrated into our power supply, with EVs acting as mobile batteries that can store and return energy to the grid when needed. To get there, though, we need to start making changes now. It's going to take a massive investment in infrastructure and technology, but the opportunity is huge. By modernizing our grid, we can create a more sustainable future, reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, and ensure that our electrical infrastructure can meet the demands of the 21st century. Take California, for example. The Golden State is leading the charge in EV adoption, but they're also facing challenges. Rolling blackouts during heat waves, utilities struggling to keep up with demand, and local transformers being pushed to their limits. In some neighborhoods, they're even limiting how many EVs can charge at once because the system just can't handle it. This is a clear sign that the grid needs a major upgrade. But it's not just California. Other states and countries with growing EV adoption rates are facing similar challenges. Europe, for example, has been rapidly expanding its EV infrastructure, and they're running into grid capacity issues as well. The situation is becoming a global one, and it's clear that grid modernization is essential if we want to keep pace with the shift towards electrification. The trillion dollar question is, can we afford to wait any longer to invest in the grid upgrades needed for the EV revolution, or will the surge catch us unprepared? As we move towards 2030, the demand for electricity from EVs is going to keep rising. If we don't invest in grid upgrades now, we could be facing even more severe challenges in the future. More blackouts, higher electricity prices, and an unreliable charging infrastructure. But this isn't just a challenge, it's an opportunity. By upgrading the grid, adopting smart grid technology, and integrating renewable energy sources, we can create a more resilient and sustainable energy future for everyone. And it's not just about technology. Public awareness and smarter charging habits will also play a huge role in managing demand. For example, staggering charging times and using off-peak hours to charge EVs could significantly reduce the strain on the grid. So, can our electric grid handle the EV boom? The answer is complex, but one thing is clear. With the right investments and innovations, we can build a grid that's ready for the future. But it's going to take all of us, governments, companies, and EV owners, to make it happen. We need to push for policies that support renewable energy and grid modernization. We need companies to develop innovative solutions for energy storage and management. And we need EV owners to be mindful of their charging habits. This is an important topic, and it's only going to grow in relevance. If you found this video helpful or thought-provoking, make sure to hit the like button, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think the biggest challenge will be as we move toward an electric future? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content on EVs, tech innovations, and the changes shaping our world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.